Hey, fitting guy here. Welcome to Project Swift. You know, for the longest time, I've always wanted to have a Swift DB1. Back in the early 80s, there was a young engineer by the name of David Bruns, and he apparently sat down at his desk and he had the rule book in one hand and his slide rule in the other. That's right, children. It was probably a slide rule. I'm not sure CAD software was quite alive back then. Maybe he had it, maybe he didn't. All I know is he had a whole new interpretation of the limits of the rule book, and what he came up with was what is commonly known as a step change. Once the Swift debuted, all other Formula Fords on the track were pretty much obsolete. And here we are almost 30 years later, and the car is still nationally competitive in SCCA. Now I went ahead and bought one for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think I got into it at the right price. Second of all, uh, I think that uh, it's gonna be an excellent project to show what you can do with Phoenix fittings on a Formula car. And so we'll do some how-to videos along the way. Uh, a couple of other things that are going to surface along the way because we have new products come out that will work on this car. And uh, with a little bit of luck, uh, hopefully I can do some vintage racing somewhere in the future, maybe a year or a year and a half down the road. Next year, 2019, uh, there is the 50th anniversary of Formula Ford racing being held down at uh, Road Atlanta. That's a bit of a stretch. If I can make it, great. If I can't, well, we'll see. Uh, but between now and then, I'm going to take this car down to the frame completely uh, and start over again and start bringing it back up. This is day one, and uh, it's going to be a long project with a lot of good, fun, honest, hard work. Uh, as the funding becomes available, I'll be working on the car. We'll be updating with videos, and especially when we get to the how-to part when we replumb this car. So for today, we're just going to... Um, do the basics. I've rolled it into the shop. Uh, we're going to put it up on the, on the stands. We're going to strip the bodywork off and hopefully that would probably just call it a day at that point. But at some point, uh, next time I work, we're going to uh, get a notebook out. And I did this, my gosh, 30 years ago, maybe longer, about 32 years ago. I bought a Lola 342 Formula Ford and um, I, I had uh, taking it down to the bare frame also. And what I did is every time I took a part off the car, I wrote it down in a notebook. And when I turned around to go the other way, I would just do it in reverse. I would take the part that was last to come off and I would clean it up or repair it or uh, paint it or whatever it took to make it look good and put it back on the car. And it's, that's going to be pretty much our process here. I'd like to be as close to original as possible. Um, the, uh, the trend in Formula Ford racing is now, I guess, Formula H, which uh, people are installing Honda motors in these cars at the SECA level. And so the vintage guys saw an opportunity to draw some of them into their ranks. Plus, it's a 30-year-old car, so it is historically significant. Uh, many of you probably know that David Bruns went on to design other Formula cars, uh, such as uh, Formula Continental. Um, I guess he made a wrong turn to uh, cars with fenders, and he did uh, Sports 2000. Uh, he also did Formula Atlantic for many, many years, and, uh, and then he designed a, uh, an Indy car. In all those classes, when the car debuted, it won. Uh, a few years ago, I owned Richie Hearn's uh, uh, Indy car, his Swift uh, DB15 or something like that. Anyway, I'll put a picture up of that. Um, uh, but he, he went on to be uh, quite the engineer, and Swift is still around. I think Hiro Mishishita, uh, what did I say? Hiro Mashashita, uh, heir to the Panasonic fortune, bought the company some time ago, and now they're starting to branch out into other things like aerospace and drones and things like that. But um, as a race car builder, the Swift story is one hell of a story, and it started with the DB1. So I'm sitting on a tire of one right now. It's sort of a dream come true for me. Uh, I bought the car a couple of months ago, and I did go over it quickly just to make sure that things were um, okay. And uh, I went ahead and did a track day, actually a half day. Uh, there was a NASA race at St. Louis, and um, I, went, I took the car out. And, of course, I had to alternate sessions with the closed wheel guys and myself as the only open wheel guy there. And, and I, <laughs> I, uh, I went out and I did one session in the morning where I just went out and warmed it up and then brought it back in. We looked it over for leaks, make sure everything was right. I was able to get out for one more session before we had to call it a day and, and come back. But uh, in the second session, I started to have a little fun. And we'll put that video up there. It's not that exciting. Uh, but it was the first time out in a Formula car in 17 years for me. 
Um, and uh, it's been since 1990 was my last competitive race. So uh, it was kind of a new experience in a lot of ways, uh, just getting used to being strapped in again. We didn't fit the seat too well because we were in a bit of a hurry and I was flopping around in the thing pretty good, especially under braking. Car does have some good brakes. Um, but uh, it, was, uh, it was wonderful. I've never driven on racing radials before. These are Hoosier slick radials. And uh, the scouting report on them is pretty consistent that you don't pitch the car around, which was kind of disappointing to me. I'd like to have some bias tires. Anyway, uh, you, you, apparently you just ease it in and let the tires do the work. And it did respond very well that way. There were a couple of times where I had to make some steering corrections. Uh, I was wondering uh, whether or not I could do that because there's not a lot of room in that cockpit. Um, there's, I've never had protection so high up on my shoulders. In my day, the protection ended at the waistline. If you took the body work off, it, it, there wasn't much between the waistline and up. Um, so it was a little spooky when I first sat down in it, but obviously it's a, it's a much safer car. Uh, what I found out is, yes, there's plenty of room to make steering corrections when you're motivated. So anyway, it's been a fun thing to have. Uh, hope you uh, join me as I, as I go through the process of going all the way down to the bare frame and then putting it all back together. And hopefully I have a vision of what this should look like when I'm done. I'm going to save the paint job till the very end, but we have some special things in, 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 uh, in mind for that too. So. Uh, thanks for joining the fitting guy. I'm going to give you a tour of the car and then I'm going to get started, put it up on the stands. I'll give you one last look and we'll get started on the project. Thanks for being with us. Well, here's one last look at the car in its current condition. Uh, I think what we're going to discover here is that cosmetically, the thing is obviously a mess. Got a lot of work to do on that body work. Um, but I think mechanically the car is sound. I've looked at the kind of work the previous owner did, and what he did was, was sound, not necessarily pretty, but uh, when it's done, I certainly want it to be pretty. So here we are getting started. I need to start pulling off all the bodywork, and uh, that is probably um, the least, the, the thing that I like to do the least is to work on bodywork. It's going to take the most amount of time, but it's going to give us the best results that you can possibly get. I really think uh, that's, that's the key to making this car beautiful. If we can get the body work in good shape, that'll make a huge difference. By the way, that engine cover is not the engine cover that came with the car. I've got a, another one uh, that's already down in the basement that... Uh, it was in an accident and he wound up just cutting it off square in the back and it really looked terrible. And I, I had an opportunity to pick up uh, the uh, engine cover you just saw me take off uh, for a pretty fair price. Um, but I think I finally have all the panels that I need in order to work with it. There is a full enclosure over the transaxle. Um, if I can find one of those, I'd like to add that to it. Um, I know that's a lot more body work and... Um, you know, you're, it's just more paint and more cost and all that kind of stuff, but it really makes the car look trim when it's on there. I bought, uh, I guess my eyes were bigger than my jack stands. Um, putting the car up on the stands, these things are uh, well and truly beyond the reach of my floor jack. So uh, it takes a little bit of a who goose the moose approach here. Uh, you know, we, we put, we, I jack it up once and put some blocks under the rear tires and then I can reposition the jack and, and uh, get it high enough to get the stand underneath. And then, then we lift up the front end and slide in the, the uh, front jack stand. But um, it's, not, it's not the best approach, but I like it to have it high, as high off the ground as I can get it. So it's a full 16 inches off the floor here. And uh, they're nice new jack stands I got from Pegasus. I uh, went ahead and dropped the wheels, got those off. Uh, pretty easy tra task here. Um, there you can see the Hoosier radials, and they still had plenty of tread on them, but by the time I get around to it, uh, I think those will be rock hard. Um, from what I understand, the vintage guys are running on treaded Hoosier radials, so uh, that way you don't have to have rain tires, and everybody's on the same spec tire, so I guess I'll have to get used to driving on treaded tires. So, anyway, just going ahead and starting to get the, uh, the basics done here. Getting all the wheels and tires off. I uh, put those down in storage in the basement and then went ahead and started uh, removing the rest of the bodywork, which was pretty simple. I've never had the bodywork off this thing and 
you know, <laughs> you got your douche clamp here and your douche clamp there, and eventually it comes out. I think the most amount of work is going to have to be done on the side panels. Um, there's a lot of fasteners that uh, had either broken through the fiberglass. I think there were some alternative fasteners that were put in in order to keep the thing together. But you know, fit and finish is everything. If I can, if we can get this cleaned up, fill in the holes, um, repair the damage, get it nice and smooth and ready for paint. I do have a paint job in mind for this car, which we'll get to later. Um, I, 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 if you, if you noticed, uh, my Lola 342 earlier in the film, uh, we copied Danny Sullivan's, um, spin and win car, the Miller car. I was no big Danny Sullivan fan, but I think that the paint scheme fit that car very well. Um, we're going to do a similar approach to this. There's a formula one car out there that I think lends itself to, uh, this body shape and, uh, and also for the subtle, shall we say, advertising that is allowed in um, in vintage racing. Because obviously I want to use this car to promote the Phoenix fittings. And uh, anyway, I think the whole thing works together. When we get to that point, you'll see what I mean. And it uh, should be a fairly unique car. Here you see me pulling off a steering wheel. Don't think I'll be needing that anytime soon. And uh, one more body panel coming off the side. Those things, I think, those side panels are going to take the most work. There's a lot of damage to them. And there you see the cracked fiberglass on top of the uh, roll hoop cover, and that's typical on a Swift. Uh, once you've been pulled by a tow rope, it tends to break that fiberglass. So anyway, there she is, naked for the first time. And uh, what a beautiful piece of engineering this car is. Considering how old it is, I, I really impressed with how modern it still looks. So stick with us. This is going to get interesting soon. Our final walk around. That is a Pat Prince nose. Um, I still have the original uh, nose, the protector for the uh, master cylinders, which I kind of like more because it fits the motif of the car, but everybody says this thing from Pat Prince is good. Uh, you see a lot of ancillaries running back and forth from the pedals back to the back. Uh, you can see the guy worked very, very hard to insulate and isolate everything. Although I think there's some better ways to do it where it wouldn't be quite so ugly. Of course, we'll be doing away with all the plumbing and freshing everything up. But honestly, I believe it's mainly a cleanup. See you next time.